Well, howdy everyone. This was the one production run. <laughs> this one I didn't even finish because I screwed up and I put it in my personal collection because I screwed up so bad for one reason or another. I don't remember. I didn't even finish the black on the other side, but the red belly dace. I made one run of these things and uh, they were they're kind of a pain in the butt to do, not gonna lie. Used a dual injector, used a copper top of some sort. Looks like I used some sort of a mica powder on the bottom for the yellow and airbrushed the black and red. This was like two years ago. I don't have the stencil to this anymore. I don't have the formula to it as far as the color combo, but had somebody that was interested in, in them again. And instead of in the 4.1 inch, a three inch size that I make a mold to or have a mold to. So I really hemmed and hawed over if I wanted to attempt that because airbrushing a three inch bait, I've gone clear down to 1.7 before just as my own personal challenge. But a three inch with that kind of color airbrushing, and I think I want to get a little more detailed this next time around. It's a, I'd normally say no, but I saw it as a good challenge. And you know what? I might not mind having a few of these for my personal collection. So I am going to try a little different pattern. When I made this, I had a dual injector. I'm wondering now that I have a triple, if I can get a little more color out of it. And I'm going to show you what I mean here in a minute. My thought process, as opposed to going with what I did last time, it's kind of darker. I want to use this guy as my example. I'm not going to worry about the reds or the blacks. Well, I am going to worry about them because those will have to be airbrushed, which means I will also have to make a stencil probably, which means this is going to end up being a long video. So I'm going to probably chop this into two videos instead of one apart part one and a part two. First one, I think I'm gonna do the color matching and the injection of the baits. And the second one will probably be making the stencil and airbrushing it. So my thought patterns are this top color right here. I'm thinking, I was thinking 24 karat with maybe a drop of black. That's by dead on plastic, but I'm afraid it might show too much red. So then I was thinking it looks dark right now, but actually when it gets added to plastic, it actually brightens up quite a bit. So this Pearl X Sunset Gold, I think is going to be my route for the top color. So I'm actually going to set that to the side. That color is going to be a pain in my booty. Um, the closest I think I can come to that is probably this mustard. I just will not make it as dark. I won't saturate it as much. So I'll use very little of this. Um, and yes, I use soap dyes for my baits. Big secret, woo. But you can get like a whole box of them on Amazon and they last you forever because you don't need very much. And there's a huge variety of colors. Not endorsed by Amazon or this company or whoever makes it. I don't even know, but if you search them out, you'll find those things. Um, but I think that's going to be my middle color. That's what I'm thinking. Not saturated much. Now, the real pain, that is bright yellow. I, I could go this route. Here's the problem, though, is it will not look the same not using mica powders. The other thing is mica powders do not, you get different viscosity when using mica powders as opposed to a liquid colorant. So I, I'm kind of straying from using that. And then I was thinking, well, I could do a, almost just a straight glitter, gold glitter. It's just yellow gold is all. But now, you know what, let me get you. A little extra light here so you can see this stuff a little better maybe well that doesn't help much but anyway then i was debating if you always don't use these these are another nice little secret this jacquard gold but it might be a little too dark 
So then you got to pull out, I'm thinking my inner Bob Ross. Do you remember watching Bob Ross as a kid? Maybe I'm too old, but he always had ochre yellow. And guess what I happen to have? Ochre yellow. It looks too dark right now, but again, once I mix it with plastic, it will brighten up. Um, so I think that's going to be my basis. I think I'm going to go this route for the color scheme. I'm second guessing something here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm still going to go that. I'm still going to choose these three. If I have to change them up, add them, darken them, maybe go a different route. This is just my preliminary first guess on this, but I think I'm going to go with it. Then the red will just have to get airbrushed in using a stencil and then a black line there. Now on my first one, I did the black. Oh, now I see why I didn't. Uh, no, there we go. I only did the one black line on the top above the red. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm thinking if I'm triple injecting in that, that, third color right there there's a real faint black line right above there i don't know that i'm going to attempt that or not it's really faint but it's a thought it's something i might do but it may not make that big a difference uh, depending on how much separation i actually get from the triple inject that's my thought process i'm going to go with it I apologize if you hear fan noise, but it's hot out here and it just is what it is. I sold myself short on that last color. See if we can get a little more eked out. I was going for three quarters of a cup on each. Worst case scenario, I will take the what's left of here and add it back to this one after the reheat. <clears throat> My first impression is, damn, sometimes I'm good. That's exactly what I was looking for. Now, I don't know until I shoot it, but for right now, that looks pretty damn close. Okay, run one. Let's slurp it and burp it and see what we got. realizing how loud those fans really were. So, turned them off for this. I kind of feel good about this. That makes me feel really good about this. All right. Hopefully it's subtle, but you still see a difference. That is what I'm looking for. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here, let's throw a little more light in here. Yeah, that's going to work. That'll make, those are good transitions. Wow. I got to 
a good feeling about this. Why? Eh, because I can. Why not? Oops. This is why I don't hand pour. Especially something this small. <laughs> oh, this one's not ready. Oh, this is going to be a treacherous. We're just going to do a little bit on that. Oh, I did not get this one hot enough. I'm not selling them, so I don't really care. Just kind of experimenting here. A little bit more there. Yeah, for what it's worth. You know what we gotta do next? That is a lot of waste. That's the one thing I do not like about this three inch bait is you probably have as much waste as you do baits by the time you're done. But let's melt it and see what we get. Hmm, I'm not sure what you'd call it, but it's creamy. So you know what we're gonna do? Let's do a run. Oh, I drew a pair. Quick little demold. I know that's not what this video is about, but nah. something satisfying about peeling these things out. I don't know what it is. Oh, that one's horrible. Wonk, wonk. Like I say, that's why I don't hand pour. Can't even see that middle layer. It's just too light. Works great on it swim bait or something bigger but i'll still fish these what the hell and these oh they all came out on one side different get some light on them here Make a good little crappie, crappie bait. I don't know. I'll shoot the rest of them and throw them up on my website, kind of cheap, probably. Hope you don't have seizures. All right. If you watched last week, you know what I'm up to, and you know it's going to get loud. It's time to make some stencils using milk carton. Well, not milk carton, milk jug plastic. Just basically cut out chunk of the milk jug and we're going to heat it up and once we get it heated up we're going to hit it with the vacuum which is plugged in right over here
so I got greedy and thought I could do two at once. And uh, you saw what happened there. That's... Hmm, that's not going to be usable. I'm going to redo that. Do a couple of them. I'll show you. You don't need to watch this process. You know what I'm doing. And voila, there we go. We've got blank ready to use stencils. The reason I do it like this is because I like consistency and I like speed. It takes a little longer to make these, but what I'm going to end up doing is marking out the red splotch area. I'm going to do that for the left and right sides. And then what I can do when I go to airbrush is I just lay the bait perfectly in place just like that. And when I flip it over, I will have the exact same consistency every time when I spray. So I'll have that. Then what I'll do is I'm gonna, gotta figure this one out yet. Somehow I gotta make those really thin lines on the top and the bottom so that they will separate out those three layers, just like in the picture. So that is what I am going to do next. I'm doing this inside right now where it's cool, but what I've done is I've taken tape and I've went over the top of the bait with tape and then I've drawn the lines where I'd like them to be. From there, I can just take that, pull that off, and then I will center that on here, much like I did this one and these. Those are for their red portions and that's for the black stripe. Then I will use my heated razor blade, I think, and cut those chunks out. With everything cut out, well, not cut out, next step is cutting out, but everything was marked to be cut out, I think we've reached a good point to say this is the end of part one of this, and a good place to say don't like, don't subscribe, I'm not your dad, I can't tell you what to do, but thanks for watching, and this will be to be continued next week.